One weakness of the Navier-Stokes equation is that it presents us the problem of finding the velocity field, V, um, and it expresses this change in time of this velocity field as a function of V itself over there, but it also has a term for pressure. And this term for pressure um, is a gradient, it's a change in space of pressure, and tells us nothing about how pressure should change in time. So that it's in itself, Navier-Stokes equation is not, it's, it's not enough to be able to find the velocity field V. Um, and so because of this, um, it, it happens from time to time that students come to me and ask, well, if we don't have the pressure P through the Navier-Stokes equation, could we not use the Bernoulli equation in there and plug it in uh, to be able to um, compute the velocity field V? Uh, it could be like a, a makeshift solution to this. And the answer is uh, no, you cannot do that. And let me show you how to do this by um, showing you how to go from the Navier-Stokes equation into the Bernoulli equation. And this helps us hopefully understand what the relationship between the two is. So what we have overall is um, uh, this situation, the Bernoulli equation, an equation that never dies, um, based on the Navier-Stokes equation. You have, you have in, um, in short, uh, you have a um, philosophical discussion between three people. You have, on the right, Daniel Bernoulli, um, who came up vaguely with um, the Bernoulli equation. And on the left, you have um, George Gabriel Stokes on the, on the top and Claude Louis, Claude Louis Navier on the, on the bottom left. Here. And you can see it as a, like a um, Greek philosophical different point of view um, between those three people. So Bernoulli comes up and says, um, hey bros, I hear you want to calculate pressure. And then uh, uh, Stokes says, uh, no, go away Bernoulli. And then uh, Navier says, uh, and we're not your bros, huh, by the way. And so uh, Bernoulli says, dudes, um, pressure is like easy to quantify. Um, and then, of course, uh, Stokes gets angry and says, No, Olivier says you are only valid for steady, incompressible, frictionless flow with no energy transfer and only one dimension. Um, and then, of course, um, Navi adds up, uh, Yes, and we are valid for all flows, huh, by the way. And so, um, <laughs> Bernoulli says, But hey, but maybe you can just take the square of velocity. And then, uh, of course, Navi uh, and Stokes are pretty angry, and so Stokes says, no, we do vectors uh, with the arrows. It's a three-dimensional equation. And then Navi says, ah, yes, huh? do you even do the thing with the upside-down deltas? Nablas. Yes, nablas. And so Bernie says, are you nervous uh, because you can't calculate pressure? And then uh, uh, Stokes says, dude, chill out. Um, and uh, yes, uh, why don't we chill out, uh, huh? by the way? Well, why don't you chill out? Uh, no, you chill out. Yes, chill out, Bernoulli. And so we are left with a problem that Bernoulli just will not chill out. Uh, Bernoulli wants to help Navi Stokes, but Bernoulli can't help Navi Stokes. And why? Uh, because both equations, the Navi Stokes equation and the Bernoulli equation, they are the same equation. And so for this to show this and to understand what the relationship between the two are, we need to go through. Um, how to get from Navier-Stokes to Bernoulli. So we're going to take, inside any arbitrary flow, we're going to take a piece of a flow that goes from 1 to 2 here, and we're going to follow a little bit of trajectory, a little piece of trajectory, which we call ds here. And we're going to follow the flow from 1 to 2, and we're going to apply Navier-Stokes on there. And then we're going to apply the conditions of the Bernoulli equation to that. And we're going to see we're going to come up with, Navi with the Bernoulli equation. So let's start with, you remember now, there are five conditions um, for the Bernoulli equation. Let's start with the last one first and put it in one dimension. So we take the three-dimensional Navier-Stokes equation, which is here. This is the complete three-dimensional Navier-Stokes equation. And you take this equation here and you project it onto a tiny bit of element ds. So we take the dot product of this vector uh, with a tiny bit of element ds. So we every time, every Every bit here, we take a dot product, dot product, dot product with ds. So that we have just scalars, so we can remove all the vectors, and we get we get this. The details don't matter. Uh, what matters is that we just remove all the vectors. So this is just the numbers now. It's just a series of numbers added up one to another. 
Once we've done this, uh, we turn to the first condition, uh, which is steady flow. And so inside this equation here that we had, we can just remove the unsteady part, the change in time of the velocity field. Um, so we're just left with this now, this one, two, three, and four uh, term equation, four terms equation. Then we make it frictionless, and if the flow is frictionless, um, then you can remove viscosity. Viscosity will have no, no effect. So we're just left with three terms here. Now that's convenient. Um, so we write it like this, and then we can just remove the ds, ds, which are there, and the ds, ds, which are here. So we get something that looks like, hmm, look, velocity times the change in velocity is rho g times the change in altitude minus a little bit of delta pressure. So it looks something like something familiar already. And then we apply the, the fourth condition, which is no heat and work transfer. And if you do that, uh, then the, the density will become constant. And you can integrate the previous term, which is rho, you can put the rho out of the integral and integrate v dv, and then put the rho out of this and integrate g dz, and then integrate dp between one and two. Um, and so you get it uh, in the end. The delta of the square velocity uh, plus the delta of z, altitude multiplied by g, plus uh, one of rho of the delta pressure. Uh, the sum of this is going to be zero. Um, so you see, this is how you get to the to the Bernoulli equation from the Navier-Stokes equation. I understand how those two are built, um, and you will feel a lot more comfortable manipulating computational fluid dynamics software later on.